Hey guys, welcome to today's video. We're gonna do a little bit of welding here using some quarter inch, I think, or it might be 316s, one of the two. Not really that big of a difference for what we're doing. Uh, using basic settings off of the machine, uh, just use the 4.0 millimeters, can be close enough to get the job done. Four and a half might have been more correct, but for this, you'll get the gist of it. And that's really all these videos are for. You guys can uh, play with settings and figure stuff out a little more on your own. But we will take this, we'll go right in here. We've got that quarter tip on there, the one that had those two flat sides you guys remember from the tips video. So let's just get on it. I'll be honest, that ain't the greatest looking weld, but had a little bit of a gap there and I didn't feel like cleaning it up with crap. And so one of the things to remember when you're using this versus traditional methods is this wire spool will push your gun along. So once you, especially if you have a nice flat connection, it'll just push the gun along. You just gotta push just hard enough to keep it from pushing you off the material and then it'll push you along. But for no longer than that took for us to Lay that bead, I mean, they're stuck together. Oh, let's lay on the other side, maybe get a little bit better result. Let's see if we can do it this way. Where you guys can see. So, see we got a decent little gap there. So now that we fill that gap, the gun's starting to push itself. Okay. Looks like we burned through a little bit, but I'm not too terribly worried. Like I said, it's not like we're using this for anything structural. No, it's good. You're going to have to play with it a little bit to get your settings figured out. But at the end of the day, for the amount of time that that took, I won't complain about that weld. But I'm also not a professional welder. So many professional welders are going to have a lot more fine tuning. But I'm just here to kind of give you guys a just on the machine and you guys can rapidly get better than me and then teach me some cool stuff you can see on this side there we started to get some of that weld material all the way down so that's why that took a little while for it to want to start pushing itself so i think uh another good thing to note with you when you actually switch to the welding that i don't think i covered in the other video was instead of using compressed air you'll actually use nitrogen that's what the factory recommends. So you have to go out. If you don't already have a bottle, either buy a bottle of nitrogen or get into a lease with a company like Airgas or somebody. Um, Matheson, I think those are both two national ones, but if there's somebody around you local that you like, use them. For me, I didn't have the setup. Uh, the regulator probably is the most expensive part of it. It's like close to $200 for the regulator. But I figured buy a good regulator and it'll last a lifetime rather than me buying a cheap one and replace it four times. So that's really the only thing to note differently is uh, make sure you change your air out. And that just makes a nice shielding gas so you don't get a bunch of, ox I believe it's oxidation problems and uh, brittleness in your weld. And y'all can uh, quickly become better welders than I am. However, I will say that there is zero chance that with a the welder that I have now, I could have laid a bead that looked anything similar to that. It would have taken me a whole heck of a lot longer, and I would have spent a whole lot more time grinding. But, let's see. Yeah, you can see there, I probably should have had that little bit, a little bit hotter, a little bit slower. But, it melted metal, it stuck it together, and if you wanted, you could get it apart. If you were really putting on something structural, yeah, you're going to get better, but for running a quick sample and showing you guys the basics how to use it that's good enough for me y'all have a good one